everyone good morning we are now at thursday ah oh, it's been a long week i was up so late last night and i'm so exhausted and then to top it off the starbucks by where i live had like this long ridiculous line i left the house late so i wasn't able to get my coffee so i'm just headed to work now Jeez, at least we got coffee when i get to the office anyway um today's vlog i kind of just wanted to do another story time i think i am interested in doing more story times um excuse me um you know like even if i even just touch one person out there i feel like i've made a big difference you know and so if I'm gonna try to build this platform, like, you know, I want to, I wanna inspire other women who are in my situation, who are going through the same thing. I wanna inspire those of you guys out there to keep fighting, keep pushing. Like, you are not alone. You, you may feel like, damn, why me? Am I the only one going through this? No, you're not alone, sis. We are going through this together. But guess what? We're going to get through this together. Can I get an amen? Amen. So you guys should have seen my last story time about my labor and delivery story. And if you didn't, go ahead. It's down in the description box. Um, today's story, I want to talk about postpartum depression and actually going through depression. I went through postpartum depression with my older son, my nine-year-old, Ajani. And so I had already known that there was a possibility of me going through it again on top of the like 9,786 visits that I made to the doctor during my twin pregnancy. <laughs> yes, that many. Like I don't think I ever saw the doctor that much. I was at the doctor like every two weeks every week like it was ridiculous like I never want to be pregnant with twins again anyway um the doctor was already prepared like we were already preparing myself um just in case what if this happens the signs symptoms whatever whatever you know and of course you guys see the horrible labor that I went through with the twins and the fact that I couldn't breastfeed the fact that I didn't get to hold my babies when they were born. The fact that I got put to sleep when I didn't want to get put to sleep. Like, all of that played a factor. On top of that, um, this is another story time that I'll share for another video. Um, I was going through it because of my baby daddy. Like, we were going through it. He already wasn't in the picture the way that he should have been. Like, him and I were already having problems. And so, you know, I, I had a C-section. I was scarred. I was in pain. I could barely, I could barely move. Like, imagine, I just had twins. I'm out of the hospital. I had a C-section. I'm in so much pain. I gotta tell you guys what I did to my baby. My babies are okay. <laughs> Let me just throw this in there really quick. After I had my C-section, I was in so much pain. And I, you know, they give you medication. And so I had the, um, I had, I had Percocets and Ibuprofen. Or was it Advil? Percocets and Advil. And so I didn't want to be in any pain. I just wanted to like get up and start doing stuff because I still got a nine-year-old. I'm still a single mom to a nine-year-old. You know what I'm saying? So I still had to get up and do shit. Well, he wasn't nine at that time yet. He was seven. A Johnny was seven years old at that time. And so of course, you know, a seven-year-old can't take care of himself. And so it's summertime. He's out of school. I had to get up and take care of my child. Like who was going to take care of him for me? I live by myself you know so anyway i started i set an alarm on my phone like i was taking percocets and advil around the clock like every two to four hours i was doping myself up that way i couldn't feel no pain okay y'all see where i'm going with this shit right 
I ended up, I was holding a Miri in my arms and I must have dozed off. And I remember like, you know when you kind of like wake up out of your sleep, but you're not completely woken up, but you're fully aware of like what's going on. I woke up out of my sleep my I could feel my arm like going down I could feel my <laughs> is I could laugh about it now because it's already happened my kids are good don't call me a bad mother just thinking back on it is like fuck <laughs> I could feel my arm going down and I could feel a Miriam <laughs> oh god <laughs> Okay, I'm having too much fun right now. I could feel a Miri rolling down. <laughs> you guys are gonna think I'm a horrible mom. <laughs> okay, I could feel a Miri rolling down my arm and in my head, I'm like trying to catch him. But because I was so doped up off the damn Percocets, my reflex wasn't fast enough you know and I just remember him thank god the bed that I had at that time was like one of those really really low Ikea beds and so he didn't like have a hard fall he just like rolled down and he didn't cry or nothing but dude you want to talk about sobering up so fast like boom it was at that moment I knew I fucked up and after that I was just like okay I'm gonna leave the Percocets alone. Like, I'm not taking no more medication. I'm just gonna push through the pain. Like, I just gotta get through this because I fucking dropped my baby. My baby was like two weeks old and I dropped my damn baby. Shit. Being doped up off the damn Percocets. So anyway, um, after that, I was in so much pain. I kept replaying in my head over and over and over like could anything have been done differently could could I have given the labor that I wanted to give like why did this have to happen and then on top of that I was struggling struggling to be able to breastfeed my kids I mean I tried everything to the point where I was on mother's tea like I was trying every single home remedy. I was eating oatmeal cookies like crazy. I was trying to do whatever I could to get this milk flow going so that I had enough to produce for both of my babies, you know? So I was depressed about my labor not going correctly. I was depressed about me not being able to breastfeed. I was depressed because this damn man who we planned, we planned these kids together. Well, we planned one of them. The other one was a bonus. <laughs> um, but we planned this pregnancy and he wasn't around the way I needed him to be the way he should have been, you know? So it was just all of this shit going through my head like I fell into a nasty nasty depression I was crying every single day like just crying 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 every day I stopped eating it was at that time like I had lost so much weight I think I had went down to like 195 or something like that so you guys you guys see in my other videos like how much I weigh now. During that depression, I went down to 195. I stopped eating. Like, I didn't care about life. I didn't want to eat. I was just like, fuck this. This can't be life. Like, I don't want to go through this anymore. I don't want to be alive right now. I don't want to be here on this earth right now, you know? And <clears throat> I can't even tell you. I can tell you. I was going to say, I can't even tell you how I got through it. It's only by the grace of God that I got through it. It is only by the grace of God. Like, I don't know how many of you guys are spiritual, firm believers in the Lord Jesus Christ, in God, whatever it is, whatever your faith is, whatever you believe in, I believe in God. And it is only by his grace that I got through that depression. It was 
so bad. But one thing that I wanted to bring to your attention is what I learned because I tend to like be very personal about my life. And so me being on YouTube is something outside of my comfort zone. It's something out of the ordinary. And I'm saying that because when I was going through this depression, there was so many people that was reaching out to me, asking me, you know, do you need help? Can I come over and, and, and uh oh, my bad. There's like this little area on the freeway that's like super, super bumpy. And so the camera's just gonna be like shaking and stuff. But, um, they were asking, you know, can I just come over and watch the kids while you get some rest, you know? And I turned down every help. I didn't want anybody to know what I was going through. I didn't want anybody around me. I didn't want anybody around my kids. I didn't want to be around my family. I didn't want to be around my friends. I just wanted to be alone with my kids in the mess that I was in and that was it and I regret it now like I feel that maybe possibly I could have healed faster had I been open to you know that extra help um there is one person there is one person in particular y'all know I'm emotional y'all know that I cry there is one person in particular who helped me get through that rough patch. And she may not even know how much of a big deal she is. She may not even know how much she did for me. Um, one of my twins' godmother. Jahan, if you... If you are watching this from the bottom of my heart, I said I wasn't gonna cry. Hold on. All right, we're not gonna do all that crybaby shit on camera. Jahan, if you ever watch this video, I just wanna say thank you from the bottom of my heart. You are truly a godsend. You are my sis star. God knew what he was doing when he had us cross paths. He knew what he was doing when, when he placed me to hire you in my office at my company. He knew what he was doing when, when, when he just connected us together. And I think that you are such an awesome person. You are such an awesome individual and I appreciate you in every way. But you guys, it is because of her that I kind of like kept pushing. I remember her coming over and she did shit that she didn't even need to do. She would come over, y'all, she cleaned my apartment. She cleaned my apartment, she cleaned my bathroom, y'all. She helped me. I remember seeing her and when I would see her, I would just break down and cry because of everything that I was going through. And at that time, she was my true, like, confidant. Like, like she was the one that I was expressing all my hurt to or, or my struggle to, you know what I'm saying? And I appreciate her. Like, that's what friends are for. That's really and truly what friends are for. And I am so grateful for her, you know what I'm saying? along with the many other people if, if all my other friends are watching this like you all played a big part in my life too thanks for taking care of me thanks for making sure that my kids and I were fed and and you guys actually there's some people who still call me on a daily basis on a weekly basis like Mo are you good y'all need anything to eat do you need gas in your car do you need this do you need that and I appreciate you guys. Um, I'm just talking about this postpartum depression part right here. So I just want you guys to know like, if you need help, ask for it. Don't be afraid to tell your doctor what you're going through. Don't be afraid to 
you know, confide in a close family or a close friend and let them know what you're going through because depression can kill you. It can consume you. It can control your whole life. And I don't want anybody else to go through what I went through. It was rough. It was rough. And I can completely say, like, be honest that I went through this depression for close to a year, you know, only because I, I was struggling. I struggled. I was struggling being a single mother to, to newborn twins. I was struggling not being able, I was so used to it just being me and a Johnny. It was a huge adjustment. And even though you guys, I feel like such a bad mom saying this. I feel like a bad mother saying this. But the truth is the truth and I'm here to say what we all sometimes feel. I feel like even though I lo I <laughs> even though I gained two sons, I feel like I lost my baby. I feel like I lost a Johnny at that same time because I was so used to it just being him and I. And you got to keep in mind, like, there's a seven-year gap between a Johnny and my twins. And so that's a long time for it to just be the two of us together, you know. Am I happy I have my kids? Hell yeah. Like, I will die for my kids. I will give my last to my kids. Like, there's... I will go to the grave for my kids. Point, period, blank. You know what I'm saying? But... What I'm trying to say is it was a major adjustment for me to adjust to not being able to just spend time alone with a Johnny for us to not be able to go out the way that we used to, um, for me to not spend the time with him that I used to. And at the same time, like I wanted him to still understand how important he was to me, how special he was to me. And at the same time, be the best mother that I needed to be for the twins, if that makes sense, you know? So it was just, it was, it was a lot. It was a lot. But again, the point of this video is to just tell you that if you've ever gone through it, you are not alone. I have been there too. And I got through it. By the grace of God, I got through it. Do I still go through shit? Hell yeah. Am I still struggling? Hell yeah. But my faith is still strong. My faith in the Lord is still strong. And with faith and belief and, and just a little bit of effort, you're going to be okay. You're going to get through it. We're going to get through it. We're going to do it. Okay. Um, thank you guys for listening to this story. Don't forget to like, comment, and subscribe. And there's a whole lot of story times that I want to share with you guys if you guys are open to watching the videos. But I will see you guys in another video. Bye.